Is the ketogenic diet possible if you don't have a gallbladder? It's a question that comes up quite frequently. And today in this video, I'm gonna break it down. I'm gonna give you the steps that you need to know to truly be successful with the ketogenic diet if you don't have a gallbladder. Hey, I'm Thomas DeLauer with Keto Mojo, and let's get into the science. All right, so first off, we have to understand what the gallbladder does. It's actually pretty simple. See, the gallbladder isn't what is actually producing bile. The gallbladder is just an extra sac that's sort of a storage area for the bile that's produced by the liver. So for example, if you were to eat some fats, your liver's gonna produce bile. It's gonna help break down the fats so they can become emulsified and you can absorb them. But you don't usually use all the bile that you produce. You see, the liver doesn't really modulate how much bile it produces. It's kind of an on-off switch. So when the liver senses that some fats are coming into the equation, it produces a bunch of bile. You use a little bit of that bile to break down the fats, and the rest of the bile recirculates and goes back into the gallbladder so that it can be stored and used later. So if you start doing the math, if you don't have a gallbladder, you just don't have the ability to store bile for later use which means that you're relying on your liver to ramp up every single time that you consume fats. You see, ordinarily what's gonna happen is you're gonna consume those fats, and if you have some bile that's sitting in your gallbladder, it can be released immediately and help you break down those fats. But if you don't have that gallbladder, you do have to wait for the liver to produce that bile, which means that you may consume too much fat at one point in time before the liver ever gets a chance to truly create enough bile. This can cause an issue and potentially cause some diarrhea and some other kinds of indigestion. But there are some things that you can do to make it a better situation. You see, if you're on a ketogenic diet, you really need to find your sweet spot when it comes down to fats. And that's exactly where the keto mojo meter comes in, because you can actually measure where your ketone levels are at. You might be a person that doesn't require quite as much fat as the person next to you. So therefore, you might be able to get away with a little bit less fat and be able to put less of a strain on your liver and the bile production in the first place. So if you actually know where your ketone levels are at, you can get away with a lot less fat, potentially. Now the other thing that you can do is you can start adding a little bit more soluble fiber along with the fats. You see, what's gonna happen is the soluble fiber is gonna draw some water into the colon. It's called passive diffusion. But this process is also gonna make it so that the digestion is a little bit slower. Okay, it's gonna slow down gut motility with the fats. Therefore, making it so that your liver has a chance to produce enough bile so you don't end up with a potential issue. Okay, now the other things that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you start modulating what kind of fats you consume. You see, you hear us talking about medium chain triglycerides and shorter chain fatty acids all the time in the ketogenic world, but the reality is those can be a big piece for you if you don't have a gallbladder. You see, long chain fatty acids require the breakdown utilizing bile salts, but short chain fatty acids and medium chain triglycerides do not. So things like MCT oil can go right through to absorption phase without having to utilize the gallbladder, without having to utilize the liver's production of bile. So therefore, you can absorb more in the way of fats without causing digestive discomfort. But again, the main thing that you wanna be focusing on is just making sure that your ketones are in the sweet spot. If you can get by with hypothetically five grams of fat instead of 10, then obviously that's better. It's less calories anyway. So as always, make sure that you're not guessing where you're at when it comes down to your ketones. You wanna leave the measuring to the meter to make sure that you are your best self on the ketogenic diet. I'll see you in the next video.